Uh, hi, folks. It's June the first, twenty fourteen. We're out here at uh, with Lanny Parcell and the uh, and his restoration group in Justin to get an update on uh, the Traveler five thousand. So uh, let's see. It's been uh, over a month, I think, since we've been out here yeah. and talked to you about it. So, uh, why don't you give us a quick idea of what uh, what you guys have been up to? Okay. Well, we've uh, you're you're standing where the wings used to sit. Last right. time you were right. here, the wings are here. Though. Well, the wings are are basically all through the silver dope and ready for their their top coat. And we've kind of moved them out of the way because when we start spraying top coat, we're going to spray everything at once. Okay. So. The, they ever did it again because I don't think it worked out that well. But the exhaust system is actually structural, and all of the sheet metal from the exhaust back to the firewall actually physically attaches to the exhaust system. That's the only thing it attaches to. So it's cantilevered oh, really? off the exhaust. Okay. All right. So the, the engine's on a on a shock mount. So when the engine's moving, okay. Somehow you got to somehow you got to transition from moving structure to fixed structure. Right. And that's right. how they answered the mail on this one. That's how. They Oh, really? Solved that problem. Okay. They mounted everything to the engine so that if the engine vibrated, so did the cowling, and it moved with it. Okay. And I don't know that we've mentioned this in, uh, on some of these before, but the engine and the instrument panel and everything was designed to be able to do a quick change. Right. right? Yeah. It was all an integral part so that when you when you pulled the engine, you pulled the instruments along yeah, with the, it. Yeah. The, the engine instruments and all of the engine controls were mounted on a, a separate part of the instrument panel, and that piece of the instrument panel was actually hooked to the engine mount. Okay. So, and, it, and you think about it, it's, it's pretty ingenious. Yeah, it is. The throttle linkage is part of the engine assembly, and, right. and the, the mag switch is part of the engine assembly, and so is the spark. It has a manual spark advance. So, okay. So to change the engines on on other aircraft, you had to un, you had to disconnect all that linkage and all of those okay. mechanisms because that was really part of the airplane. Yeah. On this yeah. one, it's part of the engine. So when you pull the engine off, the instrument panel came out of the a piece of the instrument panel came with the engine and went through the firewall and That's and everything stayed in rigs. Yeah. One of the things that we read in the in the traveler sales brochures was that uh, an experienced mechanic could change an engine in 15 minutes. Wow. I wonder if they really could. Uh, but still, the, the fact that they engineered it that way, right? For as early on as this this airplane really is, it's that's pretty interesting. Yeah. And there's kind of an eye there towards scheduled operations in some respects. Right. You know, this isn't shutting it down for a day or two days. This is we can get this airplane back up. Yeah. And of course, I would think part of that experience came from the the airmail, the cross country east and west airmail stuff that they did, where right. their whole goal was to beat the trains. Mm -hmm. And so some of that probably got yeah. built into some. Yeah. Of this. yeah. That's, it, I almost kind of compared it to like the stagecoach, you know, so right. they, they'd go from station to station and at certain stations they'd stop and change, change horses. the horses. <laughs> well, in this case, they change the engine and then they could keep going. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's all about scheduled operations, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, this is something. Now, your goal is to have this completed by when? By end of June. Okay. Yeah, we got 30 days to go from, okay. from today. So that's, well, and that's a tall order. We're going to be busy boys. Yeah, but by the same token, considering how far you've come in such a short period of time, that seems to be reasonable. It seems like it's yeah, inside. It's, it's not outside the realm of possibility because it'll go, once we put the fabric on the fuselage, it's going to look like a finished, you know, yeah, like it's finished look, airplane, finished, you know, yeah. and of course that's going to be one of those kind of deals where, uh, you know, two days and it'll look completely different and then we'll work for another week and it won't look, it any, won't different look any different for a right, week, so, right. but it's one of those kind of things, there's a lot of... Well now, some of the work could probably realistically be done at the museum too. Yeah, it could be. I mean, like I mean, the, if, the interior of the cabin and things, because you're just going to be placing seats right. for the most part, right? Right seats in the headliner and yeah. things like that that I can do once it's in place because I know the timeline, the critical timeline is they're leaving a wall out in the building so we can get this in the room that's okay. going to be in. Then I think once it's physically in the room, I don't think it necessarily has to be hanging from the ceiling right now. Yeah. They, then they could start building the wall. So you could potentially be putting instruments in the really? instrument yeah. panel and things right. like that while it's down there. Yeah. So, and their their go date is to have the building ready by the end of June, right? Mm -hmm. so, so they may be a little bit long, but you're still pretty much on the schedule you thought you were going to be on. You close. originally said you thought by the end of May. So yeah. Here we are, the end of May. And... Uh, when we saw it down at Hamilton, I thought that was a tall order. Yeah. But, uh, now it looks like it's going to really go. Now, are you going to put the uh, the fairings on the on the struts? Well, it'll have fairings 
on the on the gear V's. Okay. And it had fairings on the lift struts, but this gear actually never was fared over. Okay, because some of the pictures the I've seen. Yeah, this yes. is not the original Traveler gear. This is an upgrade oh, that okay. NAT made. They called this the Douglas gear. Oh, really? Okay. The Traveler gear was a series of bungees, kind of like a J3 Cub. Right, right. That's why it had, yeah, we've talked the about picture, that. it's got a big, wide, right. yeah, the big fairing. fairing. Well, that was, and there were studs, like Frankenstein neck bolt looking things sticking ah, out of this gear okay. with interlaced bungee okay. cords. Okay, okay. Five years old. Yeah. And they upgraded that to these rubber donuts, and I think, and, and it's got a, a spring oil shock absorber inside, a more oh, conventional does. looking okay. oleo strut. So this is going to look the same, but you're going to have some fairings on the on the V's. Yeah. Okay. As a matter of fact, we're going to use the, the original fairings. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. remember seeing those. Yeah, so. those were okay. in the stack. We're going to use the original fairings. I, we're we're actually kind of been going back and forth on the engine cowling. We've got all the original engine cowlings. Okay. And it was in pretty rough shape, needless to say, yeah. 70 years sitting out in the pasture. Right. When they were and, it, and it's all made out of what we would call SO aluminum. It's not a okay. heat treated hard aluminum. It's really soft. It's like thick aluminum cooking foil. Right. It's very, okay. very malleable and it's over the years of service, it vibrated and cracked, and okay. it's got been welded up, and it's got a lot of patches on it. But, and we've been cleaning them up, and they're getting clean enough that we're almost considering, like, these may be good enough to, oh, really? to use okay. the original. Okay. So we're, we're kind of striving toward that one. We may have to, you know, get them primed up and put a finish coat on them and then get with the, the owners, you know, get with right. the towing company right. and see, see if they like that because... It's going to look like it's 70 years old or older, you know. It's Yeah, well, yeah. that's kind of up to them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, are you going to mate the wings before it goes down there and then take them apart again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll put it together, completely together one time here. Okay. Just because I want a picture of it in one piece. Oh, yeah. In your hangar, <laughs> in right? In my hangar, yeah, right. right. Exactly. Well, it's just uh, it's phenomenal to me. Now, you're going to have to, the canopy wasn't there at all. There was no frame left or right. anything in the canopy. So you're reconstructing the entire canopy. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And I can see right now it's cardboard, so yeah, mocked up with cardboard. Well, it's it's just uh, it's it's been amazing to watch this progress, and now it actually looks like uh, looks like an airplane, and you can see the end in sight. It wasn't uh, wasn't that way. It hasn't a few been that ago. obvious for a while. No, it hasn't. <laughs> so, uh, anything else you want to add? I don't think so. I okay. think that's pretty much where we're at right now. When do you think uh, the winging might take place? It's probably going to be the last week of June. Okay, because we're definitely going to want to be back for yeah. that. Yeah, and, and, and if everything works out right, I'm going to put on a show. Oh, good. That because I've got a I've got a friend of mine in Dallas that has a Traveler four thousand. Oh, really? It's a Traveler okay. two thousand and Sanger with an OX five on it. Nice. Mount Pleasant. There's a guy named Scott Glover over there that just bought a Ford trimotor. I don't know if you'd heard that story. No. He has a Traveler six thousand. Where did he get the? Order it came out of Phoenix. Oh, okay, because they just sold one up in, in Portland too. Yeah. So, so he's got a he's got a Golden Age collection out there. Nice. We're negotiating with him to bring the six thousand over here, so we could line up a two, uh, a four, a five, and a six all on the ramp together. Wow. Probably. I, you're never going to get that picture again. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is terrific. Well, Lanny, uh, the work that you guys are doing out here still just it's amazing. It's fun to watch. We're glad to have the privilege of just watching you do it. I so, appreciate it. So, thanks. Thank you. And that's it from uh, from Justin for today. Some things about this airplane. Well, here lately we've been working on the window frames. <coughs> up here, this is a fascinating. The window is kind of divided up into like six and a half inch squares, like a checkerboard. This one's just two pieces here, and it's been kind of. We have no prints, so. What we've done is, is go in and measure and try to scale out the, the, right. uh, the photographs we've had and, and worked it out as best we can for it. It, uh, it's, it looks right, you know, to the eyeball, uh, to the real airplane. Uh, the rest of it is just our best guess because there are no, no prints or anything to work from. Sure. But it, it's going to look like it did pretty much whenever it came out of the factory. So that's what we're working on now. We've been working on clocking the uh, uh, exhaust where it's right and correct for all the pieces that we have, and I think we've got that down now. So engine parts pretty getting pretty close to being done. So you've uh, been able to round up quite a few uh, 
few photographs of these airplanes. Yes, sir, right? we have. Uh, we've got a pretty good book. I think we've probably got as, as a bigger collection of photographs as probably anybody in one place. We uh, Jerry Asher has done a great deal of research. He's an aviation artist, part of the nationwide art, uh, sure. aviation artist organization. And uh, he's gotten a hold of his artist contact friends, uh, his contacts in all the museums. Uh, we've not heard back from the uh, Raytheon Beach guys, which hold all the rights to the Traveler now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we've got probably as big a, a, a collection of photographs of the Traveler 5000 as anybody we've seen, because we've gotten parts from here and parts from there. We sure. put it all together in one place. Sure. So. So th this will be a truly authentic reproduction. When as best through. we can. And not not a reproduction, prints. but right. a restoration. Yeah. As best right. we can without any prints. So. Right. But, um, yeah, it's it's been a really great project. We've had a great time doing this. Well, learned a lot. It, it's certainly a beautiful airplane. Yeah, we've also learned a lot about Amon Carter. He was a heck of a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was. Yeah. Um, we know, can thank him for a lot. He was pretty feisty from what we can tell. You yeah. Know with uh, the, F, the, the FAA uh, now, uh, the CAA back in those days, kept wanting him to take the airplane off the registration. And he went, no, I may, uh, I may run mail with it or something here in the future. And <laughs> it's yeah. As far as I know, it's still on the registration. It is. It is? It, is? it definitely okay. is. So, yeah. Right. In fact, that, that's how I located the airplane in the first place. Oh, it was through the FAA? Yeah. That's neat. That's neat. But yeah, this has been a, yeah, you know, it's it. so historical to the area that that's what's made it so fun and, and interesting to us. You know, right. Just to find out the history of the airplane, first of all, that even that it did even exist is just phenomenal. Exactly. You know, so. Yeah, I saw a picture of it in an old newspaper mm -hmm. and it showed the end number on the, on the wing. Mm -hmm. So I looked the number up and yep. found out that the thing still existed down in Hamilton. Yep. Well, they found it. That's that's it's, it's a, it. Like I say, it's just a miracle that this thing's still around. It is. Yeah. You know, from yeah. where from where Harry and how Harry found it, it's just wow. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. He he said he was flying over it one day and just happened to look down and see it. Right. Just accidentally. Yeah. And Who did he fly for? Uh, Continent. Continent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same as Jim Hodgson, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Now well, there went the neighborhood. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's it's been a wonderful project. We're really excited. And We're getting real close to being putting fabric on it. Hopefully, Lanny was saying uh, yesterday that hopefully by the end of this weekend, which is today, we're going to be real close to starting to sling fabric on this thing. Good, so good deal. We're, we're <coughs> finishing up some of the wood wood uh, dust making uh, items. This stuff that I'm working on is one of the last things. Um, and uh, now we're just cleaning up stuff. Lanny's working on. Uh, the uh, tail skid section back there, he just made up panels back in there. He's working on the control uh, surface cables going through the fuselage. So yeah, it's it's uh, coming right together. And you know, if it wasn't for Harry Hansen, this airplane wouldn't be here. That's right. That's exactly right. It, <coughs> exactly right. Because we, we have to thank him that he's got found it and saved it and sure. saw it on the ground. From, yeah. In fact, you know, he, he started the, the first restoration yeah. on the plane. Yeah. You know? yeah, he did a wonderful job. Yeah, had wonderful those wings job. built, and boy, they're beautiful. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. there was no wings left. Sure. You know, whatever he found it, all the wood was gone. Right. You know, it didn't sit there since early 30, well, 39, and we got pictures of it in 39, to where it, it, you know, the wings were starting to come apart. You know, there's no fabric left on it at all. And, yeah. uh, you have the wings? Yes, sir. They're done. They're ready to go. Oh, yeah. In fact, we'll sh I'll show you here in a second. Okay. okay. All right.